<clears throat> the Spartans by Mr. Amster. Before you begin, please make sure that you have a sharpened pencil or pen and a highlighter. The Spartan Government. It was an oligarchy. Remember, an oligarchy is where two kings rule. And in this case, the two kings ruled with equal power. One led the military, and the other led most of the religious services. But with that in mind, they had very little power. The true power laid in the Council of Elders. They consisted of the two kings, but also 28 other elected men who were picked from an assembly, and they were elected for life. And they had the ability to overrule decisions made by the assembly. These council of elders had to be at least 60 years old and noble. Now, to be 60 years old in Sparta meant for the last 20 years, or 40 years, you were serving in the military, so you were probably a pretty good warrior too. Thus, you were respected. Now, the assembly dealt with people that were older than 20. They decided on questions of war and peace that they would propose to the Council of Elders. They did not so much debate laws, but they got to vote on them. And they could propose things to the council that the council would bring back to them. The last one in the Spartan government are known as the E-Force. There are five members, yearly chosen from the assembly. And they're in charge of public affairs and their students' education. Please take a moment and highlight oligarchy. Council of Elders, most powerful. Assembly. Decided on questions, did not debate, just voted. And the E-Force, five members, yearly chosen. Economy. Now, the Spartans themselves have very little interest in this. They relied on conquered neighboring city-states. These slaves and non-citizens were used to produce goods. The slaves were called helots, and they lived in their own villages, and they did their own thing, but they had to give half of their food to the Spartans. The periochio might get to serve in the military, if they're very lucky, and only if they're needed. They could not take part in the government, and they made necessary items for the soldiers. Shoes, the red cloaks, their iron knives, and their spears. Trading was discouraged in Sparta. Why do you think that? Make some idea, write some ideas down. Well, trading in its most basic form is designed to help the spreading of ideas. And Sparta likes things just the way they are. They didn't want to make changes. They thought the Athenians were weak, and they looked down on almost every other civilization. They used iron bars as currency. Why do you think?
It was to discourage tra uh, stealing. Please write that down. Can't get very far with a bunch of iron bars. Kinda holds you down. Please take a moment and highlight little interest in farming themselves. Trading was discouraged. Iron bars as currency. If you are having trouble keeping up, please pause the video. Otherwise, let's keep going. Education. The purpose of their education was to produce men and women who could protect the city-state. Babies that were not healthy and strong were left for dead. They had no time for weakness. Not here. Not in Sparta. They valued strength and discipline. At age seven, children were trained to fight. Even girls were. It was called igogi, and they learned to wrestle, box, foot racing, and gymnastics. They learned to read and write, although it's not that important of a skill to them. They're taught to deal with pain. They would march without shoes, and they were beaten constantly. No pain, no game. No pain, no, well... No pain at all in Sparta. They're encouraged to steal and not get caught. And the story of the boy and the fox is one that they would tell their young people. And the story goes, and please put your pencil down to listen here, of a young boy who was training and was hungry, and he caught a fox. But as he caught the fox, he was called to, he, he was called to, road, to, uh, to line up. He didn't have time to kill the fox, so instead he stuffed it into his cloak. And he knew to be quiet, or else he would be beaten. So, as he remained quietly in line, the fox began to tear and bite. And eventually, the boy dropped, and he, was, and he died. And I know this is a sad story, but the story behind it is a boy who honored Sp the Spartan rules. And that's the story of the boy and the fox. Not verbatim, obviously, but the general idea. You better not get caught stealing. You better not get caught with food. If you did, you were in trouble. And you would pay the price. And the beatings would have been far worse in his mind. At 20, you were tested on your fitness, military ability, and leadership skills. Passing meant that you were a Spartan soldier and a full citizen. What's one thing you get to join? If you said the assembly, you're correct. Now, military service continued until you were about 60 years old. At about 30, though, and please make a note of this, you were allowed to take on a wife and start a family. 30, start a family. Please take a moment and highlight education, produce, people, or men and women, protect the city. Valued strength, discipline. Taught to deal with pain. Highlight the story of the boy and the fox, because it's a very important story to the Spartans. Military service until 60.
And just so you're aware, women were expected to be strong too. It was because that they would give birth to these men. And a strong woman meant that she was going to produce a strong boy and a, str a future protector of the city. Women and slaves. Women lived the same simple life as men. They wore plain clothing. They didn't wear perfume, jewelry, or cosmetics, any type of stuff like that. They looked down on people who did that. They were expected to be strong, healthy, and ready to fight. And their true purpose was to produce strong boys that would eventually protect the city-state. They had a saying that Spartan women are strong because only and are able to speak to men because only they are the ones who give birth to real men. They had the ability to speak with their husband's friends, which was unheard of at this time. They could own property and control it. They could even remarry if their husbands didn't come back from war or were away for too long, they could remarry. They, were t they told their husbands as they sent them off to battle, come back with your shield or on it. What does that mean? If you don't know, write I do not know. Circle it and be prepared to ask. The slaves were called helots, and they were people that were conquered by the Spartans. And despite being the fact that they were 20 times larger than the Spartans, they didn't overthrow them, because they were treated harshly. They were allowed to have some rights, a little bit. They were able to marry whomever they wanted, and if they were good farmers, could buy their freedom. But they were beaten and kept down. And if they were ever caught with a sword, they were killed instantly. Please take a moment and highlight women lived the same simple life as men. No jewelry, perfume, cosmetics. Come back with your shield or on it. Helots, 20 times larger, could buy freedom. The end.